You're sitting on the balcony, fiddling with your phone, when suddenly, everything around you starts to turn to dust. Gaping, you put your phone down. You see cars, bicycles, sidewalks, street, and traffic lights disappear right in front of your eyes. People in the street are panicking and running in different directions. You glance at your watch, and it vanishes too. You turn to look at your room through the balcony door and see that all your furniture is turning to dust. You look back at the street and see nothing but a dust storm. Your house starts shaking. You run downstairs and stand in the middle of the road. You're just in time to see the buildings in your neighborhood fade away. You try to get into your car, but in the next moment, there's nothing in the place where it was standing just a second ago. You check your phone and see several notifications about the world going on a full reset. Everything humans have ever created is now disappearing. You're still holding your phone when it gets lighter and lighter, until it's completely gone. The same process is happening all around the world. The Eiffel Tower, the Pyramids of Giza, the Empire State Building, they have all vanished. You try to find somewhere to hide until this disaster ends. Two years later, you wake up in a cave, together with other people. Everything humans have produced throughout the centuries of hard work has disappeared from the face of the Earth. Everything that's left behind is people, animals, and nature. Your city is now a massive plain of barren land, with a few trees scattered here and there. Your community consists of your former barber, a comic book store manager, local baker, and your neighbors and friends. You head out of the cave to pick up some crops you planted earlier in the season. There's not a building in sight that would obstruct your view. You can see the mountains miles away. That's where the nearest town used to be. And over there, that's the ocean where you once went jogging by the bay. The land is swarming with wildlife. Plenty of raccoons, badgers, possums, and wild cats roam the neighborhood. Next to your tiny garden, there's a large bonfire where you cook food and have your night gatherings. Not too far away, you can see a well. Once, there was an old piping network down there. But when the world reset, it disappeared. The only thing that remained underground was the water that you now use for drinking. Your local police officer is the leader of the community. He stands on a log and says you've only got a week left before the water runs out completely. You'll need to move to another location with a new source of water. You finish your work and take a quick nap because you're on night duty. You walk around the perimeter. There's no light pollution anymore, and stars are gleaming above your head. Two other people are also patrolling the area. Suddenly, you see something running in the distance. You look closely and spot a fox. It's heading to your chicken coop. You run toward the animal and shoo it off. Finally, it's the moving day. Everyone packs their stuff in bags made of rope and begins walking. You've got only one horse carrying supplies and water for everyone. It's going to take around a week on foot to reach the lakes. You make your way through the plain, which used to be a highway leading to the next state. It's scorching hot, and your group is moving very slowly. Along the way, you meet other nomadic caravans that trade goods with you. At night, you set up camp next to an old gas station. The building is gone, but the foundation is still there. A week later, you finally make it to the mountains near the lake and enter the forest. You have to walk uphill almost all the way. Soon, it gets too dark. You have to make camp under the cover of old trees. It's a cold night, and the members of your group gather around a campfire. You're back to your night duty when everyone falls asleep. You scout the area and hear some growling sounds. You look around and spot a bear. You duck down and try not to make any noise. Suddenly, you notice that next to you, there's a little bear cub. It's curiously sniffing the air just a dozen of feet away from you. The mama bear roars, calling its kid. You back up slowly. Everything is fine until you accidentally step on a branch. The cub starts wailing. Its mom leaps out from behind the trees and spots you. The massive creature stands up on its hind legs and roars.
people in the camp wake up in a panic. You run back with the bear right behind you. The leader and the rest of the night patrol manage to scare the furious animal off. You've got tons of experience with foxes and raccoons, but bears are a whole new thing. You realize that you're not at the top of the food chain anymore. The next day, you proceed with extreme caution. Lots of wild animals, like mountain lions and bobcats, are lurking around. You finally make it to the other side of the mountain and see the lake. It's a large area that used to be a public camping spot. Now, there are a couple of settlements built near the water. Your community isn't that big. That's why you settle near the river flowing out of the lake. You build a hut next to the waterfall and continue to work as a farmer. You meet amazing people from other settlements. They used to be scientists, engineers, musicians, doctors. The scientists are trying to figure out a way to rebuild the society based on technology. But it's likely to take decades. They've made the first step by creating a clay oven, pots, and pans. They've also built a dock on the lake and canoes for fishing and transportation. A couple of months pass. You've constructed an irrigation system that uses lake water. The engineers in the settlement have even made a piping system. It delivers fresh water to every house. Now, these specialists are constructing a small dam to generate electricity, but that might take months to do. The settlement is growing bigger with each next week. New huts are being built all the time. A carpenter has created a workshop to make furniture and tools. You no longer have to be on night duty and can focus entirely on your crops. Ever since everything humans had created vanished, people have been much healthier and stronger than before. No one sits in their hut with their eyes on the phone or TV screen. The smog that used to cover cities has disappeared. Marine life is thriving. There's no pollution. And trees are now growing in places that were once deforested. Everyone travels on foot or by horses and donkeys. People have been breeding these animals for transportation, so there are plenty of them around. And the economy has changed, with everyone offering their labor in return for food or other things they need. All people have to contribute if they want to live in settlements. There are some nomads who stay alone, but it's not easy to survive in the wild without help. That's why these people mainly work as merchants. They deliver goods between settlements that are too far away from one another. To entertain themselves, people role-play parts of old classic movies in front of an audience. Someone managed to make guitars, flutes, and percussion instruments from scratch. Now, you can listen to concerts at night. You find a beautiful spot to do some drawing. You use natural ink and leaves instead of paper. Suddenly, you spot something sticking out of the ground. You pick it up and examine the familiar, almost perfect shape. In a moment, you're already rushing back to your hut to wash off the dirt. Someone tries to check what you're doing, but you make sure no one sees your find. Finally, it's clean. Your suspicion is confirmed. It's a smartphone. It's the first evidence of the past technological progress which hasn't disappeared. You try to get it to work, and the gadget actually does turn on. You read a text on the phone, and it reveals the truth behind everything created by people turning to dust. Among all the planets of the solar system, our Earth is unique, since it's the only one that has developed life. But what if we got a competitor? What if a second Earth appeared out of nowhere? Then there would be two different scenarios. The first is the destruction of both planets, and the second has an unexpected but pretty logical ending. But let's start with the catastrophic scenario. The second Earth with the same conditions could only exist if it received absolutely the same amount of sunlight as our planet. The orbit that our Earth follows is perfect for getting the necessary amount of solar heat. If we were a little further away, the entire surface of our planet would resemble Antarctica. And if Earth were a little closer to the sun, we'd all live in a huge desert inhabited by very few living beings. So. For the second Earth to be identical to ours, it would need to follow the orbit of our planet. Two massive objects can exist close to each other. The union of Earth and the Moon is a great example. But if the second object was as heavy and huge as our planet, there wouldn't be enough space for both of them. The gravity of two Earths would be a huge problem. 
the two worlds would collide because they would be pulled toward each other. This process would last for hundreds of millions of years. And in the end, the two planets would transform into one giant world. And their remnants would be flying around the newly formed planet, resembling the rings around Saturn. Or one of the planets would push the other out of its orbit. In this case, one of the Earths would hurtle toward the Sun and burn like a match in its atmosphere. It's also important to remember that Earth is moving at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour at all times. This is more than 80 times faster than the speed of sound. And now, imagine two huge planets that are flying toward each other at such a speed. Even a microscopic organism living in the mouth of a volcano wouldn't stand a chance to survive the collision of two Earths. Even the moon would be torn to pieces by the blast wave. But let's imagine that Earth's twin is following another orbit somewhere between Mars and Earth. Even in this situation, people's lives would change forever. By the way, the theory that Earth might have a twin appeared long ago. Scientists of the past believed that the second planet could be hiding on the opposite side of the Sun. Thanks to modern technologies and astronomy, we know this theory isn't true. Otherwise, our telescopes and other equipment would have already caught some signals from this planet. Scientists study space objects thousands of light years away from us, so they would definitely notice another world in the neighborhood. But anyway, let's imagine that the second Earth does exist, and we've discovered it recently. The entire field of astronomy and astrophysics will immediately receive hundreds of billions of dollars in funding. The study of Earth's twin will become a priority goal for people. Experts will put forward hundreds of hypotheses about what the second Earth looks like and what's happening there. The planet is almost at the same distance from the Sun as we are. This means the weather must be the same there. Soon, scientists find out that Earth's doppelganger has liquid water and continents. But they aren't like ours. Their shapes and location are different. Most likely, life exists there too. But what is its origin? There's a hypothesis that life on our planet appeared thanks to amino acids brought here by a meteorite. It's highly improbable that the same thing happened to another world. Life most likely emerged there in a completely different way. Perhaps the fish didn't get out of the water on that planet, and the first intelligent creatures appeared in the ocean. These could be amphibians with scales and fins, or octopus-like monsters with huge tentacles. Fish on the second Earth could have come out of the water and grown limbs. But what if they didn't like walking on the ground? Then, this world might be inhabited by intelligent bird people. Or, life could have originated deep in the soil. Then evolution would create humanoid moles or highly developed worms. To find out for sure, scientists send a rover there. A similar mission to Mars was a success, so there shouldn't be any problems with this one. People on Earth are waiting. What will the rover find on the other side? It will take several years for the ship to get there. Strangely, two days after the launch, it returns. But wait, this is not our space probe! All this time, the inhabitants of the second Earth have been watching our planet too. At one point, they also sent a probe. It's made of the same materials as ours. It has a camera and a recording device. But people are worried because the rover looks similar to a mechanical spider. Can it be that giant tarantulas live in that world? Scientists understand that we need to communicate. We send our guests a radio signal with some information about our civilization. They catch this message and send their own. It contains strange symbols that resemble scratches. Linguists all over the world are trying to decipher it. Meanwhile, astronomers send the guests a recording of human speech. A few days later, our satellites catch a message from our space neighbors with their voices. Scientists are about to play the recording. The whole world is listening with bated breath, and it's a growl. A terrible, an absolutely incomprehensible growl. It has pauses and an unusual rhythm, but it's nothing resembling human speech. The whole planet is panicking. All countries are preparing for an invasion. The most important thing now is to build shields to protect the planet. No one can decrypt the message. It's possible that our neighbors can't understand us either. People make a last attempt to establish some contact. We send a video to explain to our guests with the help of gestures and signs that we only want peace and collaboration. The answer doesn't take long to wait. 
our satellite receives their video file. Scientists play back the recording, and it's shocking! We see dinosaurs in robotic suits! Life on the second Earth has been developing in the same way as on our planet. But the infamous colossal meteorite didn't fall there. Over millions of years of evolution, dinosaurs have become sentient. In the video, they're growling and pointing with their claws at the picture of our Earth. Then they start growling even more loudly and… is it laughter? The recording ends. People consider this the announcement of the invasion. Several years have passed. During this time, scientists have exchanged messages with dinosaurs several times, and it seems we're beginning to understand them. It turns out that the reptiles also want peace. They say that their planet was once inhabited by humanoids similar to humans, but a massive flood wiped them away. Dinosaurs managed to survive and evolve into intelligent beings. It will take many years before people set foot on their planet. And when this happens, humanity will feel relieved, realizing that we're not alone. But what if there was no intelligent life on the second Earth? People would also be happy. We would know that we'd always have another home. Perhaps we'd start exploring Earth's twin right away, or begin mining its resources to replenish ours. In any case, our lives wouldn't change immediately, because that land would be too far away from our planet. Dozens of generations would pass before people begin settling on the second Earth. Our homeland planet would be losing more and more resources, so everyone would want to move to a new world. In the beginning, only the richest would be able to do it. But with time, space travel would become cheaper. People would probably invest a lot of money to build a paradise on the second Earth. If this happened, we'd be visiting this world during our vacation to breathe fresh air and enjoy nature. In any case, the human population would grow. This means that sooner or later, the second Earth would become as loaded as the first one. And then, people would start searching for a new home among the stars. By the way, if any life exists on a planet similar to ours, it's likely to look like octopuses. There's even a theory that octopuses came to Earth from some other world. Any animal has several evolutionary stages of development. For example, elephants and mammoths descended from one common ancestor five to six million years ago. Looking even further, almost all mammals evolved from one ancestor they shared with reptiles. Each species has been changing over millions of years. But not octopuses. They suddenly appeared on a family tree. From the point of view of evolution, squids would have to evolve into octopuses millions of years from now. But look, they're already here. Besides, octopuses are incredibly smart. Their genetic code is much more diverse than the human one. They may be visitors from another planet that is similar to ours. But of course, this is only a hypothesis. A huge meteorite enters our atmosphere causing an explosion of catastrophic proportions. All forms of life on Earth cease to exist. A giant wave of fire wraps around the planet several times until only ash and dust remain of the green landscape. But then again, there's another option for our planet's future. The sun could swallow it. Wait, 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 wait. Who is this? In the course of its evolution, our star will keep expanding. Am I the only one hearing this voice? Until it gets so big that it just swallows our planet without even noticing it. Hey buddy, that's my video. I don't think so. Okay, alright, I'll share it with you. But let's not look that far into the future. Whatever you say, buddy. How about the fact that the Earth will soon have rings? Like Saturn? Almost. Saturn's rings are made of dust and ice. Yeah, I've heard about that. Thousands of years ago, something really mysterious happened in Saturn's orbit. The planet's gravity tore one of its satellites apart. Yes, Saturn is a gas giant. It's 95 times heavier than Earth. So it has stronger gravity. It attracted a small moon from its orbit to its surface. Then, it was torn apart from the inside by tidal forces, like the ones between Earth and Moon. Many huge fragments stuck in Saturn's orbit. Some scientists say there was a collision of two moons there. They crashed into each other like billiard balls. As a result, both cosmic bodies turned into a pile of debris and blocks of ice. No matter how they got there, this debris started circling Saturn. They collided with each other, turning into smaller rocks. It was a kind of cosmic blender. Rocks gradually ground into dust, and huge blocks of ice turned into small crystals. On average, the objects are in the same ratio to these rings as a human fingernail to a school bus. 
And soon, similar rings will appear around Earth. But how? I mean, we have the moon, and it's hard to imagine that it could break apart at any moment. Plus, we don't have another moon to recreate the same collision in our orbit. Space junk. We have a lot of it. We started launching spacecraft into Earth's orbit in about 1957, and it almost always follows the same scenario. Ah, yes. The rocket consists of several parts, a booster, or even several of them, the second stage of the rocket, and a cargo, which is contained in a capsule at the end of the rocket. The booster accelerates the rocket to almost orbit and then undocks. The second stage fires up the engines and climbs even higher to get the cargo into orbit. Then the second stage undocks as well, and the cargo capsule releases the satellite or space probe into outer space. Yes, the first and the second stages of the rocket and the cargo capsule were disposable. That means they stayed in Earth's orbit. Over time, our planet attracted them. They entered the atmosphere and burned up because of friction with the air. But many objects keep orbiting our planet for decades. As of 2021, there are about 170 million space debris objects in our orbit. These are parts of spacecraft, like the bolts used to undock rocket stages. They are also old artificial satellites, operating ones, functioning spacecraft, and debris from collisions that had already happened. Oh, I've heard about that. In 2009, two satellites collided with each other. Both satellites were destroyed. They shattered into about 600 pieces of different sizes. Yes, and these sharp metal fragments are flying in orbit at about 6 miles per second. So they could make a trip from New York to London in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, that's about the same speed at which our rockets fly. And that's about 45 times faster than commercial airplanes. So these fragments have a lot of energy. As they collide with each other, they shatter and become smaller. Just like the moon debris around Saturn. Exactly. But a bunch of metal debris orbiting faster than the speed of sound can damage our spacecraft, right? Yes. The International Space Station has already turned on its engines to maneuver once to avoid a collision with a cloud of space debris. Sharp metal parts can damage the hull of the space station or even puncture it. Then the ISS, worth about $150 billion, would be destroyed. So if we keep throwing debris into orbit, we could really give our planet the rings. And then they will be visible even during the day. They will reflect sunlight, just like the moon. And if you look out the window, you'll see beautiful stripes interrupted by the shadow that the Earth casts. It's an amazing view. Do you want to see an even more unusual one? Imagine that our sun has increased in size by 10 times. And that process is happening right now. Our star is a giant boiler burning hydrogen. It's continually heating up, and every billion years, the sun gets 10% brighter and creates more heat. It'll heat the Earth more, and eventually, the oceans and seas of our planet will begin to evaporate. Thick clouds will completely cover the sky, turning Earth into a giant greenhouse. Our home will look like Venus. Looks like humanity will no longer be able to live on Earth. What will we do then? Well, we'll load all the humans and animals into spaceships and move to Mars. At that point, the Sun will have warmed it up nicely. Water and carbon dioxide deep in the planet's interior will begin to evaporate and create an atmosphere there. This will cause a greenhouse effect and warm up the planet enough for you to wear shorts there. And then we'll watch the Earth become a lifeless rock with acid clouds like Venus from the surface of Mars. Yep, but in about 7 billion years, the Sun will start to expand even more and become a red giant. In this phase, it'll become 256 times wider than it is now. So it will completely swallow Mercury and Venus, and the edge of the star will lie just in the orbit of Earth. So our planet will just drown in the hot plasma on the sun's surface? Eh, Maybe. But when a star burns so much fuel, it loses weight. And so the sun's gravitational field will weaken as well. So it won't keep the planets of the solar system as close to itself anymore. Perhaps our planet's orbit will become wider, and then Earth will become the first planet near the sun. Some scientists believe that, at this time, Saturn's moon Titan may gain conditions suitable to become a new home for humanity. Then, the Sun will begin to shed its upper layers. It'll lose mass and gravity dramatically. This will plunge the solar system into chaos. Some planets will collide with each other. Others may just fly away into the far dark space. It would be a game of cosmic billiards. Exactly. And the final stage of the Sun's life is a white dwarf. Then our star will become the size of Earth. 
The planets that survive won't get enough heat from the white dwarf, and its light will gradually fade over billions and trillions of years. Another challenge that awaits Earth in the distant future has a galactic scale. Ah, the collision of the Milky Way and Andromeda. Bingo! Right now, the Andromeda galaxy is moving toward us at 60 miles per second. You could make a trip around the globe at that speed in just six minutes. Yeah, you can already see the stars and gas of Andromeda Galaxy in the night sky with an unaided eye at 2.5 million light years from Earth. And in 4 billion years from now, the galaxies will begin the process of merging. No one could be 100% sure about what will happen to the Earth. It could be total chaos when the stars and nebulae of both galaxies collide. Then supernova explosions would go off everywhere. Like fireworks. But this is extremely unlikely to happen. The concentration of stars and space objects in galaxies is very low. The distances between them are gigantic. It's like if you took a handful of sand and scattered it all over the planet. The most likely scenario is that by the time the two galaxies do collide, there will be no liquid water on the hot surface of Earth. That would mean the end to all terrestrial life. Scientists believe it can happen in about 3.75 billion years.